did you think that you might not survive? Honestly, yes, at times. I, I sort of flipped between two states. Um, there was the I'm going to fight this thing and I'm going to survive state, which then became I really don't care and I wish you'd stop talking to me so I could just kind of, you know, let whatever's going to happen happen kind of state. And then I've, I've, I'd, I'd, I'd catch that and start fighting again. Then I'd, I'd, I'd flip between the two. So it was, it, was, it, was, it was kind of dark times initially, I guess. Back in November, George found himself at the centre of Britain's longest ever cave rescue. He'd been here in the Brecon Beacons dozens of times, but on that day, deep underground, his life changed in a split second. The first thing I knew about it was this instantaneous feeling of legs whirling around in midair and arms grabbing for something and just this kind of feeling that, you know, one second I was caving, the next minute the world went mad and then it all went black and then two minutes later I kind of woke up in a very different state to, <laughs> to when I'd started. Can you remember the pain? Yeah, <laughs> yes I can. Um, there was just, just, just intense waves of pain, like really, really not very pleasant at all. So I had to move myself. Um, so long story short, that involved dragging myself by the tips of my fingers through the dirt for several metres until I found a bit where the slope went from, from that to that. Um, so that my head was then above my legs. Um, so, you know, I was, I, was, I was just screaming and screaming in pain at that point. His friend went to raise the alarm. George had broken his leg, his jaw, several ribs and was bleeding. After three hours, the first rescuers arrived. I remember hearing the voices in the distance and realising that this time they weren't in my head, they were actually real people that were coming. Um, I remember those first aiders turning up. I've basically lost somewhere between 12 and 18 hours, probably towards the 18 hour end. So there's, there's bits of rescue that I don't remember. You're right. How, do you? How are you doing? Nice to see you. I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> to help George piece together what happened, we reunited him with some of the 300 volunteers from around Britain who stopped what they were doing to answer the call. It's in human nature, isn't it? Um, and um, we've all been in those remote situations and we know that if something happened to us, our, our colleagues would, would come and get us. Uh, and therefore this is, um, you know, part of that is to, uh, um, is, to, is to do the reverse and do whatever is, is necessary. And, and everybody brought their A game. How did it feel when you were on the last stretch of that journey out? Um, the, 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 the last stretch of the journey was actually a really, really good experience. Um, you enjoyed it? In the, <laughs> I've almost, in a funny kind of way I did. Um, um, because that last stretch isn't the most difficult piece of cave um, and it's, it's reasonably spacious, um, there, there were a lot of people there um, and that they'd kind of let, I think they'd let anyone who wanted to, from, from, who'd taken part earlier on in the rescue, join in for that last bit. So there were masses of people. I'll probably never see that many people in a cave again. Um, and they were sort of, you know, forming this big sort of human line um, passing the stretcher from person to person and and you know I can sort of like see face after face after face going past me you know acknowledgements and thanks and nods of respect and just you know it was it was a really nice experience <laughs> in a funny kind of way I'm sure the morphine didn't hurt right. <laughs> Amazing. This is one, one of the one of the things that I love most about caving is is the the, the sort of camaraderie and the, the sense of the sense of community that we have this this this, this thing that this thing that we do it, it creates quite a a really sort of tight-knit bond between between cavers. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that they achieved what they achieved. So we've got ropes set at 30 metres. Despite his injuries, George says he will return to caving and to show his gratitude, he's training to join the team who rescued him. George joining us as a team member, I, I think that's tremendous. Uh, you know, he is an experienced caver and he understands a bit about rescue from the receiving end. I think that would be a real asset to us uh, in, in that respect. But I think uh, it, it shows his determination really that it's not enough we've rescued him and he can go back to his caving. He wants to get involved, give something back and actually be one of those that rescues others. I think it's fantastic. I'm a caver and I'm a diver and it's what I do. It, it's what makes me happy and you know, I, I know that whilst, whilst something, so, something bad did happen to me, um, the chances of it happening are, are, are very, very low. Surely the chances of it happening twice are exceptionally low. Let's hope so.